This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famers, Mike Van Dees joining us here at Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker. Deal or no deal. The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Yo, what up? Happy Wednesday. The Jason Walker Show, Major Mortgage Man Cave. Big show coming up today. We are uh, going to talk with a respected doctor from New York, Dr. David Samadhi, who will enlighten us on COVID and masks and all of that on this day in history coming up and uh, the walk-off, a whole lot more as well. You can uh, listen on Podbean, Network One Sports, also uh, watch on uh, Facebook and the Twitter and go to um, my Twitter page <laughs> and watch it. Oh, man, trying to uh, to figure that out. Apparently, Twitter is doing a whole lot of hacking. Uh, there's a whole lot of people getting hacked on the Twitter. Um, knock on wood, we haven't, but uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Of course, some of you may think we did. I don't have no idea. But uh, anyway, we are uh, we are live and hanging out and having fun. But all right, what do we got coming up today? I already mentioned some of it. We are going to start with our annual or daily annual our uh, daily COVID update. Montana, 145 new cases, a record, and uh, confirmed cases 2,096. That is total since March. Uh, Active case is 1,147, which is kind of, so we had 145 new cases, 1,147 active. Yesterday we were at 1034. I guess some people got better. Uh, 145 total hospitalizations since March, but 37 active, and there have been 34 deaths. 915 have recovered. And uh, yesterday, 2,362 tests for a total of 123,758. There is your active update. 145 new cases. 72 in Gallatin County. Um, Yellowstone County had a whole bunch of new ones too. 27 new ones in Flathead County, or in uh, Yellowstone County, rather, Flathead at 8. Yellowstone County with 27 new. That brings their totals, state leading totals, to 396. Gallum County, 242. Almost 400 active cases in Billings in Yellowstone County. Still going to have Big Sky State games this weekend. So, there you go. Um... Uh, last week, New Mexico postponed fall sports for high schools. Pennsylvania just came out today and said they're moving forward with uh, fall sports as scheduled. So some states are going to, some states are not. It'll be interesting to see what happens in Montana because, as we know, MHSA is going to give everybody as much hope as possible because uh, that's what they do. They're in the hope business. Um, Today, Governor Steve Bullock said he is issuing a statewide order effective immediately requiring the use of a face covering to slow the spread of COVID. Um, Goes into effect immediately. It applies to counties with four or more active cases. 
So if you have three or less active cases, you don't count. You, you just, nobody, nobody cares if you have three or less active cases. Uh, it applies to certain indoor business settings. I think his quote was, no shoes, no shirt, no mask, no service, something like that. Um, indoor business settings that are open to the public, outdoor gatherings of 50 or more when distancing is not possible. That, that key word, social distance, that we love so much, key phrase. Social distance. Uh, let's see, what else? Businesses have to re, uh, post a sign that masks are required for those ages five and up. If you are five and under, you don't matter. I get it. Kids, my daughter's too. She doesn't want to wear a mask. Um, CDC actually says it's unhealthy. They don't recommend wearing masks for kids two and under. Uh, that will not be required, though, when consuming food or drinks in establishments. Well, that's good. Because I'd hate to see people trying to eat and drink with a mask on. That would be kind of tough, I would think. People say, well, I'll cut a hole in it. But then you, cut, you, you, you um, defeat the purpose of wearing a mask. But if you're going to wear a mask, I think you should also have to wear eye protection. Because... If someone coughs or sneezes, apparently within six feet or less, uh, it's going to get into your eyes. It can get into your eyes. And then you get sick. See? So you have to wear a full face mask um, and mask. And that's how the football is going to have to happen this fall, I think. We're going to have to have all the football helmets are going to have to have eye mask, uh, visor protection, which a lot do now uh, because people just don't want to. Football players little secret here. Um, you get poked in the eye a lot if you're in the bottom of a pile. That happens. Um, so that's why the visors. And that's the original reason for the visors. But also, um, you, you wear a mask under your face mask while you play football. And I just want you to think about that because that's how football is going to happen. They say mask up. Football is a contact sport. There is coughing, sneezing, aching, stuffy head, all that fun stuff in football. And basketball is a contact sport as well. So when we get to October, when basketball practices are supposed to start, think about that. There's a lot of, lot of uh, bodily fluids being exchanged, both on the football field and on the basketball floor. Volleyball, somebody licks their hand, serves it, you touch it. On the, uh, the, the return, just saying, stuff to think about. But now you have to wear a mask in Montana if you have four or more cases in your counties. So that will include Gallatin, Yellowstone, Flathead, Garfield, Bighorn, Cascade, Missoula, Lewis and Clark, which has 42 active cases, Ravalli, Richland, Beaverhead, Carbon, Lake, Madison, Rosebud, Broadwater, Custer, Dawson, Deer Lodge, Glacier, Granite. Ooh, Golden Valley County just missed. You have three cases, but none new. Uh, Hill County, Jefferson County, Lincoln, Marr, Park, Roosevelt, Silver Bow, Stillwater, Teton, Tool, Valley. Those are all of the ones that are going to have to mask up wherever you go out in public. They say you don't have to wear it in your house. Well, that's good. I mean, there's probably some, some married couples or couples living together that uh, would love to have their, uh, would love to have their, uh, husbands or wives or significant others masked up so they don't have to see them talk. Um, given the mask mandate, Nicole says, this is exactly right. Facebook message from Nicole. Uh, you need to wear it outside if social distance can't be maintained. How does the Big Sky State Games manage that? Because not a whole lot of social distancing in certain events at the Big Sky State Games. But 
got to have it. Got to have the state games. They, they have to happen. Um, this is just nuts, man. And I don't know what to think. Like I say every day, we give a COVID update every day, and we're going to talk about it every day because that is all that really matters right now. There are no sports right now. Okay? And it just sucks. So in Montana, start wearing a mask out in public, everywhere you go. Unless you have a health issue. What if you're claustrophobic? Legit question. Um, but how do you prove that? So, all right. What else were we going to chat about here in the open? Oh, the mask and the COVID. Did you see the thing about Burger King? We're going to talk about this um, coming up a little bit later on in the show. Burger King and gas. And I'm not talking about petroleum. <laughs> so, oh, sometimes there are just things that you just have to talk about. And we're going to talk about Burger King. Uh, a little bit later on today. Uh, it is a big happy birthday today. Jeff Choate, Bobcat football coach, is 50 today. The big five zero. So happy, happy birthday. Uh, saw this. The Portland State football wants, its, uh, wants compensation for the canceled non-conference football games with Arizona and Oregon State because Pac-12 said they're only going to play conference games. Well, that affects MSU, which is supposed to get six hundred seventy-five grand from Utah. Portland State, a combined payout from Arizona and Oregon State, 950000 And Portland State needs that money. Absolutely needs that money. I mean, this is a, a, a university, especially a football program, that doesn't draw well. Okay, they've struggled. And Portland State need to, need to set, needs that 950000 um, man, and we know Montana State's losing six hundred seventy-five grand. So that'll be interesting to, uh, moving forward over the next uh, couple of months is to see if those canceled games between FBS, the money games, um, FBS to FCS or FCS to DV, uh, Division Two, if those games uh, get compensated, those teams, because man came out today, Akron, University of Akron, who it's already dropped a bunch of sports, um, came out today and said they're basically eliminating nearly 200 positions. Akron may not survive. Forget sports. Akron University may, or University of Akron may not just survive. And that's the case with a lot of these smaller schools if there's not football. Football's the breadwinner for 99.9% .9 of schools or sports and uh, athletics. Of course, you can charge 49000 for tuition and room and board and uh, probably get by if you don't have sports. But, um, yeah, keep an eye on that. Portland State wanting compensation still for its games with Arizona and Oregon State that were canceled. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, did you see the fire in Gardner yesterday? Like five or six businesses absolutely just gutted. And that's a bummer. And historic, like two-bit saloon in Gardner. Man, our thoughts go with uh, out to that uh, community. Remember, was it 19, late 80s, Gardner High had a fire. Burned down the, burned the gym. Burned the school uniforms, team, you know, all that stuff. Uh, and I remember Gardner finished the season on the road, but they also finished the season wearing old Montana state men's basketball jerseys. Um, late eight, I'm going to say 87 or 88 that happened, but I remember, remember it. It was, it was a bummer, but they had the blue and gold already. So the cats uh, donated uniforms. So, all right, we're going to take a break. And uh, when we come back, should you or should you not be concerned about COVID 
Should you or should you not wear a mask? Will we have sports this fall? And will we send our kids back to school? Dr. David Samadhi will join the show and talk about it next when we return here on The Jason Walker Show. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po'boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work. Then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces. Stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. Mark LaRoe, photography.com. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm Agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Oh, it is a Wednesday on the Jason Walker Show, July the 15th. Tomorrow's my dad's birthday. So, Jeff Choate's birthday today, my dad's birthday tomorrow. How about that? Pretty good uh, company there. Inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave, we're going to talk a little bit about Northern Rodeo coming up. Also, Burger King... And gas. <laughs> oh, but not a, not a, not a petrol. Yeah. All right. Uh, also on this day in history coming up, the walk-off brought to you by Cafe Zydeco is on the way as well. And uh, a whole lot more. Tomorrow, by the way, we're going to talk uh, to Montana State women's basketball coach, Trisha Binford. Signed a new uh, contract, went into effect uh, July 1st. And she is uh, the highest paid um, basketball coach at Montana State. And deservedly so. So we'll talk about that tomorrow with uh, Coach Binford. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn in Helena. All right. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of misinformation. Okay. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of everything surrounding coronavirus, COVID-19, all of that. And 
I've said it before. I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor. The majority of my audience, I don't think I have any doctors that listen to this program. Um, and if you do, please come aboard on and, and talk. But um, I told you back in, was it April or May? I went to April, I think. I went to the doctor. And my nurse said, you know, she's wearing a mask. And she goes, I'm only wearing one because I have to at work. She goes, I don't wear one. Well, everybody has to wear one now in counties of uh, four active cases or more in Montana, thanks to Governor Bullock's mandate, which is not entirely legal, by the way. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. And a, a governor has, has no authority. Okay, listen to this. A governor has no authority to order its citizens, uh, the citizens to do anything. The power is limited to directing agencies for which they're responsible. Now, public health agencies can issue a mandated order, but they can only do so in a time of an emergency. So this comes from Peggy Hall, uh, lourockwell.com. An emergency is defined as a health threat with a casualty rate significantly greater than normally present. Since the COVID-19 casualty rate now is officially recognized, as not significantly, uh, significantly greater than seasonal flu, there is no emergency. Therefore, states like California, Montana, have no authority to order anyone to wear masks, remain six feet apart, shelter in place, wash hands, anything else. That's co- washing your hands is common sense. Um, so keep that in mind. They cannot fine you for not wearing a mask. Now, if they want to call Congress back, special session, make a law, then that is something different. But, all right. Wanted to get a doctor's thoughts on COVID-19. Another doctor. We talked to one back in March, I think, March or April. But there's been a lot of since in the last four months. And Dr. David Samadhi, uh, you can follow him on Twitter, at Dr. David Samadhi, Dr. David Samadhi, but uh, he's well respected, especially on the East Coast. But uh, he's very active on Twitter and uh, wanted to get his thoughts. And he joins us now here on the Jason Walker Show, courtesy of the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. All right, Doctor, I appreciate you joining us uh, from New York. A little late out there, but uh, um, are you staying safe? Not so bad. We're doing great, and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. I, uh, I appreciate you, uh, you uh, joining us. Like I said, um, you are very outspoken on, uh, on your Twitter about COVID and a little bit of overreaction. And I've been saying, doctor, since March, that it's okay to overreact, but at the same time, be concerned. Um, tell me more about COVID-19 from a doctor's perspective here. Well, I think it depends on like what part of this journey you're talking about. Six months ago, um, we had no idea what is facing us. We had a virus that we didn't know much about it. We didn't know who it was going to infect. Since then, we know that our nursing home has taken about 47% of death comes from there. So the ground zero is mainly elderly with a sickness, diabetes, high blood pressure. We, since then, we have come in the last six months with many different treatment options. We understand this disease much better. Our death rate has been has been declining for the past many weeks. Even though the numbers in some states are high and there are some spikes here and there, there's a multiple reasons for why those numbers are up. Whether it's testing, whether it's the riots, whether it's the rallies, whether it's people going out and socializing after like being home for three months, all of that has reason to these numbers. But the bottom line is we know how to take care of the patients and the death rate is down. So I think, you know, the news is pretty optimistic six months after. And we're going to uh, win over this virus. It's just a matter of time. Dr. David Samadhi joining us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. When you look at the numbers, and yes, you mentioned, you know, we've had this huge spike in Florida and a lot of the southern states. But a lot of that is because people up north are heading to the south. Or, uh, you know, out in West, people traveling to, uh, to states like Montana. But you mentioned the death rate. And to me, that's the number that should be focused on the most because the death rate keeps dropping. And one life lost is too many. But 
we're going to see less and less deaths. Am I right? Correct. If you want to give yourself a grade about how great you're doing as far as managing this pandemic, look at the death rate. The number and the number of hospitalization and the number of positive COVID is important, and that's part of the picture, but it's not the whole entire picture. There's a lot of issues with some of these COVID positive patients that are getting tested three, four times, and it's being counted as four times for the same person. We heard in Florida that there are so many labs that there's no transparency, and some are reporting almost 100% positive tests. We have people that are just testing, you know, uh, a lot. You know, we used to do like hundreds and thousands, and now we're going to 400,000 tests a day. So the more you do, the more you're going to find. Our healthcare systems, our hospitals have opened up, and they're ready for elective surgery since a month ago. So every patient that goes for surgery, they have to get a test before they go to the hospital. That's also going to find a lot of asymptomatic patients that may test positive. So for many, many reasons, we had riots, we had protests, people that were not social distancing. And so a lot of those guys are coming in. But the, the bottom line is Florida's problem has nothing to do with New York. New York was like two, three months ago when it was really hot. A lot of mismanagement, a lot of nursing home issues. We put a lot of sick patients back into the nursing home, and that became a wildfire. Your governor is a smart guy. He's not doing any of this. He uses a lot of facts and common sense, and he's very logical. And the concept of locking down the state because the numbers are going up doesn't make much of medical sense because lockdown is not meant to cure this virus. Remember, the lockdown was to give you the flat turf so the hospital can catch up with you. You look at the hospitals and they keep saying the numbers of hospitalization and ICU beds are like overwhelming. Well, the hospitals have to have their business. You don't want any hospitals to be empty. This is what they do. Which hospital wants to be empty? So, but if you look at the proportion of the COVID patients to non-COVID, only about 20% of them, 25% of them are COVID. The rest are non-COVID patients. So, you need more details than these big hypes on the mainstream media that's meant to scare people and create panic. Dr. David Samadhi joining us here, Jason Walker Show. You can follow him on Twitter, also SamadhiMD.com. Um, when you look at masks, and we're seeing more and more states and governors mandating mask requirements, including just here in Montana today, uh, Governor Steve Bullock said it with uh, counties of four and more active cases What's your take on masks? Because I've read so much from the CDC that says masks don't work, but then they came out today and said you should wear a mask. I, I think there's a lot of confusion with all the masks. Please so enlighten us. <laughs> I think uh, if you look at my Twitter feed, I put a really nice diagram where in March, around March, uh, February 22nd or early March, the numbers started to escalate. At that time, we needed Dr. Fauci to come and say, here's a mandate for everyone to wear a mask because we think, based on the science, perhaps there's 30% reduction in the number of cases. What they did was they said, no, it's okay, you can do whatever you want, and they never made the mandate. Why? Because at that time, he said that you know they didn't have enough masks for doctors. He didn't want to create panic. Well, that's a wrong answer to the public because Americans could be very creative. They can wear their scarf. They can pay their, you know, vendetta. They can do a lot of things to cover themselves. Interestingly enough, now that the numbers are coming way, way down, and you look at the bottom of the curve, this is when they start to mandate the, the mask, which doesn't make much of a sense. Now, the debate about the mask is very difficult because it's a non-winning debate. Because what do we get from the public health? Social distancing, hand hygiene, and masks. And by taking this mask away, you're basically telling them 30% of everything you're telling us is a waste of time. I think it's an easy thing to do. I think it's easy. You know, we want to cooperate. We want to follow whatever they tell us. But the truth is, wearing a mask is very difficult. (laughs) I had it on for like seven hours the other day, and the elastic part behind my ear was causing like so much pain. People don't wear them correctly. There's an art of wearing it. I see people wearing it around their neck, around their chin. Culturally, we're not in China. We're not used to this wearing masks for hours and hours and hours. If you're around people, if you're in an area where there's a lot of people, you need to respect them. I think wearing a mask is perfectly okay. 
But I highly doubt that people are going to wear like 16 hours of mask. I mean, you can't breathe. It's humid. It's hot. Uh, it gets a lot of bacteria of itself. But out of respect, when you're around other people, I think it's advisable to wear it. That's where I stand with this whole thing. If you're in the beach and you're the only one in the next stretch, like 200 feet, and there's nobody around you, wearing a mask is not going to help anyone. So common sense also goes very far with it. Dr. David Samadhi joining us here, Jason Walker Show. Um, masks, like I said, a, a, it's a big, big deal right now. And I've read that the cloth mask that a lot of people are wearing actually doesn't work. But then the CDC came out again, like I said today, and said cloth masks do work. Which, if you're wearing a mask, which which <laughs> mask should we go with? Well, you know, it's very hard to, to follow CDC because they change their position so fast and so quick that the public is completely confused. Um, you know, I think uh, you don't need to wear these N95, the KA95. Those are very difficult to wear. But I think the regular mask, um, that's a dollar or so, and it's easier to wear. You, you have them. When you're in public, you wear them. I think, you know, mandating something like that would be very difficult to reinforce. You know, you don't have a mask police out there walking around with a ticket, $15 ticket, when you don't have your mask on. I think this is just a personal responsibility of the public. Um, the good news is that the number of deaths are coming down. Mm -hmm. the, overall, the pandemic is slowing down. I think the virus is slowing down in Europe, in many other countries, and I hope we will see a similar thing over here in this country. As we reopen our country, we may see like these kind of spikes in different states. They may go from Florida to Georgia to somewhere else. But we're going to see this move across the country until it starts to die down on its own and we will move on. The concept of vaccine is something that has come up many times. People are asking a lot of questions about it. We'll see, you know, uh, where and what type of vaccine we're going to get, how safe, efficacy among elderly, and so on and so forth. So we still have to wait and watch that very carefully. Doctor, when you look at the guys, the people that have recovered from having COVID, we won't know long-term effects for quite some time, but they say lungs, they say possibly heart problems and maybe kidneys and brain problems. Um, what's, what's your advice to people? Because, again, this is a virus that has never shut down the world in 100 years, like Spanish flu that we saw you know, 100 years ago. We've seen nothing like this in our lifetime. Correct. I think there has been some papers written about possibility of long-term scarring the lungs, but not the, to the point of having real pulmonary issues. That's something that we need to follow these patients closely. Um, and I think as long as you treat patients early on and recognize them and make sure you treat the inflammation, and that's where things such as zinc and z and hydroxychloroquine and all these medications come in, when you find it and you treat it with steroids, nebulizers, anything that opens up your lungs and you reduce inflammation, the chance of any long-term consequences and, and problem with this virus becomes lessened and lessened. And that's the really, the, like any other disease, you want to be able to detect it early, you want to treat it early and intervene as fast as you can. So when you call your doctor and you have symptoms and they tell you, call me back in three days um, and take some Tylenol, that's the, that's the wrong answer. Dr. David Samadhi, a couple final questions for you in the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Will we have sports this fall? I'm sorry? Do you think we'll play sports this fall? Um, I, I, I don't see, like, a, a, a sec are you asking about the second wave this fall? Yeah, I mean, we're gonna, are we going to be able to have sports once college campus yes, is we, open? I'm sorry, your voice was going in and out. I apologize. I believe we're going to have sports. I believe, um, look, I think the, this new norm that people are talking about, you know, whether it's masks for the rest of our life, which I hope it will never happen, or opening up our sports, I think if we do it safely and responsibly and we check the temperatures, you have to understand as time goes on, I think this is going to slow down. I really truly believe that we, won't, we will not see a second wave. I mentioned that a month ago. We have our equipments. We have our medications. We're much smarter. We can fight this virus. And this is nothing new. If this virus goes, China will send something else a couple of years from now. The big lesson for us is really to become independent in our healthcare system. No more antibiotics from foreign countries. No more drugs. These are national security issues. 
which is a much bigger problem than whether we should wear a mask or not. Those are small issues. We, Americans are very resilient. They will get through this. Mask or no mask, we will be fine. But the bigger issue is, why is this happening all the time? Every few years, we're going to get something like this. It's affecting our economy. It's affecting our lives. How can America have their antibiotics and their medication be imported from China? Think about that. Mm -hmm. That's a much bigger question that we need to deal with as a result of something like this. The second thing is, maybe God is sending us a message. Maybe it's time to get our obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure. And I'm actually writing a book, which is going to be published in about a month or so, to, to get those diseases under control and become a healthier nation. And if we do all of this, I think we're going to come back bigger, better, and stronger, and America will be just fine. You know, a lot of good things will come as a result of this. There's a lot of conversation about whether we should open up schools this fall. And, and, you know, I don't know anything about this virus. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a Facebook doctor or a Twitter doctor at all. But there's a lot of why does this virus seemingly not affect younger kids um, as frequently as like the flu or other elder or more older people in their 20s and above? Basically, this virus, what it does, it causes the systemic inflammation and it takes over your immune system, takes over your organs, starts with lungs, go to your heart and, and your kidneys. We know that there's a lot of clotting that goes on, especially in elderly, and it kills you that way. Children's immune system are very strong, very powerful, and they can fight it out. So the risk of children getting this virus dying from this or transmitting it to their adults are very, very low. And that's one of the reasons why the risk of opening schools is extremely low and it's time. And that's one of the expectations from people like Dr. Fauci and others is to just come and publicly say it. You know, by opening the schools, you're going getting the children back. Right now, they're not learning anything. There's no logging in. There's no learning. There's no kids are meant to be around each other, physically, mentally, psychologically. Culturally, they need to learn from each other. And when the risks are low, by opening up the school, you're going to let parents go back to work and open up our economy, and everything is connected to each other. So why they're not coming out, looking at the data from many, many European countries that we have already, we have the science, we have the data, we have the facts. Just come and, and tell the truth, and, and, and that will save this country. But I think we're going to see our schools open up. We cannot just, like, keep the families stalled like this. And I hope this has nothing to do with election or politics. I mean, you know, uh, we need to put medicine ahead of politics at this point. That's what America needs. That was my next question was going to be, why has COVID become so political? Because we saw Ebola, we saw swine flu, we saw Zika, we saw West Nile, we saw all these other diseases over the last, you know, 20 years. Why is COVID so political? If the mainstream media is putting the health of the public um, second, just for the sake of election, this would be a very sad time in our in our country. And it's time for us to all work as one America. It doesn't matter what color you, you are and whether you're on the right or left. This is a, a fight against the virus or wherever this virus came from or whichever nation released this on us. We need to all come together, stick together and fight together. Um, the election will take care of itself. The people will vote. They will decide who would be the best for this country. This country is not ready for any kind of socialism. I've traveled all over the world. They're not going to accept those kind of concepts. We, they need prosperity. They need freedom. They need statues to be where they are and enough of this looting and burning and bringing statues down. This is not what America is. We need to stop our differences. And we need to come together for the sake of the country. And we will. I promise you, America will become stronger very soon. And we will win. But there are a lot of lessons that came as a result of this. that so we need to make sure that we don't forget. Well, and, and you being born in Iran and, and moving over, I think, in 1979, I mean, you know what bad countries can be and how America is great. Well, this, we are blessed. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize it, and they take this for, for granted. This is one of the best countries in the world. And I've said it on many interviews that I love this country. It has been very good to me and my family. This is a country of freedom, and, and we need to protect it. When the statues started to come down, 
I said, we don't need another 1979 revolution in this country. We need to be civilized. If you have any issues, we can try to solve this. Um, but uh, I, I, I hope that uh, this will be all resolved after the election. Final question for you, but should people continue to listen to Dr. Fauci? Because he seems to have been thrown into the wildfire, I, I guess, so to speak. Well, Dr. Fauci, again, on a personal level, you know, has it from one doctor to another doctor, you don't want to criticize someone because it's not professional. I want to assume that he's given his best and he is doing everything he can. But the issue is that there's a lot of people want someone more positive. They want to look, give them the right data. They want to lift them up. This country is ready to be lifted up. They don't want to see a glass half empty all the time. They don't want to see all this pessimism. And they're, as soon as they're ready to take off, again, I'm worried about this and I'm worried about that. When you start thinking about this, it's just depressing. Don't forget, 40 million people lost their jobs. Mm-hmm. A lot of suicides out there as a result of this. People have lost their savings. They're coming and their stores have been looted. And, and the issues are much more complex than just, an infectious disease who may be brilliant in its field, but we have to look at the entire picture. Depression, anxiety, family abuse, and on and on and on, and look at the risk and benefits. In medicine, you always look at the risk and benefit. If the risk is higher than the benefit, that's not a good deal. So whatever decision they make, they need to be very careful and well thought of before they come and say, mandate this or mandate that. Here we go again, lockdown one more time. How can you bring the fifth most powerful economy in the world in California back to lockdown where you just started to like open things up? What's the purpose of that? What are you going to do? You're not going to cure the virus. So what's the purpose of this? Your hospitals are not overwhelmed. Your ICUs are not overtaken. Mm -hmm. So I think it's unfortunate a lot of these governors are just like flexing their muscles and, 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 you know, a lot of lives are being played on. It's, It's very unfortunate. Well, I appreciate the uh, the candor and the uh, openness and the learning that you just gave us uh, in our audience, Dr. David Samadhi. You can follow him, Dr. David Samadhi, on Twitter. You can also go to samadhimd.com. Uh, appreciate the time, sir. And, it's my uh, pleasure. And we'll uh, hopefully get a vaccine soon. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you for thank having me. Thank you, Dr. David Sam- well, there you go. Dr. David Samadhi joining us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline and uh, a lot of info there. If you want to re-listen to it, if you missed anything, jasonwalkershow.com. It'll be up uh, after the show and uh, you can listen to what the uh, the doctor had to say. Um, some great stuff there. You know, wearing a mask versus not wearing a mask. Why is shut, you know, we can't lock down again. We can't shut down again. Um this is a political feeling, uh, thing as well as a, it's not even really a pandemic anymore. It's an epidemic, but still it's a lot. Um, I saw this today. This is actually from a TV station. Um, I don't know where it's from, uh, what TV station it is. Um, but this is according to a Harvard epidemiologist. Air conditioning units may be contributing to the spread of COVID-19, especially in the southern part of the U.S., Coming from a Harvard epidemiologist. So you're saying that the virus can get passed through a filter, through an evaporator, a blower, through ductwork and all that, but a mask is going to save us? Clean your filters in your, (laughs) if you've got central air. Just clean your filters anyway. All right. Segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. We'll be right back. An NRA update and Burger King. Gas. It's next. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? 
Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work. Then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces. Stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. Mark LaRoe, photography.com. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Final segment on a Wednesday in the Major Mortgage Man Cave. This segment brought to you by Mark LaRoe, photography.com. Make sure you uh, check out the website. Mark's got some fantastic stuff up there, some new rodeo stuff from 2020 and some ranch life stuff too. If you book... Any portrait package with Mark and mention the Jason Walker show, he'll give you a free 8x10 canvas or matte print. And also, if you um, mention the Jason Walker show and you purchase anything, he'll give you 20% off. That's awesome. Mark LaRoe, photography.com. All right. Appreciate Dr. David Samadhi joining us to uh, enlighten us about uh, the COVID and um, yeah, always a always a good good thing to learn, correct? Um, because not everybody is a doctor, and this platform we give you opportunities to hear from doctors and hear from um, everybody, including yourself. If you ever want to weigh in, you can. Nobody does. You're scared. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. No, I'm just kidding. Well, maybe a little. Uh, <laughs> let's see. All right, so let's get our Northern Rodeo update. They will run at Scobie this weekend. Um, Bearback is being led by J2 Bridges out of Dillon. That kid is so good. Uh, Bryce Patterson, Bozeman is in the two slot. Will Nordstrom of East Helena in three. Is Steer Wrestling, Tyler Hooley from Browning leads the way. Jet Murphy of Helena is in second. And Ty Iverson of East Helena in third. Uh, a couple of these uh, guys are heading off to the um, National High School Rodeo Finals coming up at uh, Lazy E Arena in Guthrie, Oklahoma, this month. By the way, Ty Erickson, the world number, the world, the reigning world champ in steer wrestling, is fifth in uh, the NRA standings. Um, and I bring that up just because it's got to be pretty cool for guys like Tyler and Jet, Ty Everson, Kobe King, by the way, from Dillon, the top four to sit there and, and go, hey. We're, we're leading a world champ right now. That's pretty cool. Uh, breakaway, Alicia Bird, Cutbank, Seeley Salmon, Shoto, Michaela Witter, Helena, one, two, three. Michaela is, she's so fun. I've, uh, I've had her on the show before, and she's so much fun to chat with. Uh, she's going to Western now, competing down there. Tie down, Jade Gardner, Winnet, Ben Ayer, and Bradley Hayes, Glendive, Kalispell, respectively, sit two and three. Saddlebronk, uh, Geraldine's Caleb Meeks. Two dots, Andrew Evgene. It's his birthday today, by the way. Happy birthday to Andrew Evgene. And uh, Judd Applegate at Deer Lodge sits in the three slot. Team uh, roping header, Garrett Duncan, DeLon Parker, and rope three irons. That is a fantastic name from Lodgegrass. I got to get, we got to get rope on the air. 
Rope Three Irons. What a great name. And speaking of three irons, Callaway makes really good ones. Uh, Kyle Callaway is in sixth. See that we just tie everything together. But ro- I got to, if anybody knows Rope Three Irons, please let me n- give him, give him my number. Give him, uh, give me his number because I want to talk to this kid. Rope Three Irons. On the healing side, Colton Fisher, Ryan Zercher, uh, Clay Gunshows. That's another. We got to have Rope and Clay together on the show. Rope Three Irons and Clay Gunshows. Oh, I love it. Uh, barrel Racing, Tammy Joe Carpenter, Callis Bell, number one. Lindsey Cruz sitting in two. Abby Knight, former uh, Providence Argo, sits in third. Bull Riding, Riley Barg, two-time defending champ on the NRA circuit, Peyton Fitzpatrick in two, Jade Murphy in three. Uh, all around, Ben Air leading the way over Sam Levine by uh, about 1000 bucks. NRA running, like I said, at SCOBY this weekend. And anywhere, I don't know if they're anywhere else this weekend. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, the Daniels County Fair Thursday. That's it, tomorrow night. In uh, Scobie. And then off until next week. Eureka. And then uh, end of the month in Superior. So we'll follow the Northern Rodeo Association. All right. Not sure if you guys saw this yesterday. Burger King came out. Said that they are. uh, They're experimenting. Um, Their initial research has said that lemongrass um, helps cows and the environment. So they don't, Burger King sounds like they're teaming up with AOC. Quote from Twitter. You know what? I'll just put it up. Can I show this? Uh, let's get uh, get the sizing down a little bit better here. Um, okay. Burger King says that cow farts and burps are no laughing matter. They release methane contributing to climate change. That's why we're working to change our cow's diet by adding lemongrass to reduce their emissions by approximately 33%. You can uh, go to bk.com slash sustainability to learn more. Remember that kid, Mason Ramsey? They got him to do a song. <laughs> when cows fart and burp and splatter Well, it ain't no laughing matter They're releasing methane every time they do Wow. And that methane from the rear goes up to the atmosphere and pollutes our planet, warming me and you. Yes, that methane that the past is a greenhouse gas that'll trap the sun's heat and change our climate too. Gee, is it hot in here or is it just me? So to change their emissions, Burger King went on a mission testing diets that would help reduce their All right. Um, <laughs> anytime we get to talk about farting cows on the Jason Walker show, we're going to do it. So apparently lemongrass is good for cows' diets. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I saw a great tweet today from uh, good buddy Brendan Howard former uh, Great Falls High star, now at MSUB. He said, um, how did he phrase it? Uh, Basically, he said, uh, wow, and still not a Mason Ramsey fan. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Yeah. Hey, that's what we talk about. Jason Walker Show. This is why we need sports back. This is why we need sports. Mask, no mask. I don't care at this point. This is why we need masks. We, we have, we've hit the bottom. We're talking about cow farts and cow burps on the Jason Walker Show. That is why we need uh, sports. Man, um, speaking of, going to be playing in the golf tournament this weekend, the Disabled American Vet Tournament uh, over at Bill Roberts Golf Course. It's a two-day tournament, fantastic. Um, all the, the proceeds benefit the DAV, and it is a, fantastic, a fantastically run tournament. Um, Chase and Dan do a great job and appreciate everybody that's uh, out there um, playing and sponsoring and helping out the DAV. It is, uh, it's awesome. So we'll see you out there on uh, Saturday and Sunday. And I think, according to the email, I think we might have to wear masks while we play golf this weekend. 
Or maybe it's just while we're standing around. Because there's less than 250 people, but there's more than 50. I don't know. Because I don't know. All right. Uh, let's get to On This Day in History. <laughs> Burger King and farts. That's, on my, that's literally on my rundown. It says, it's segment three, brought to you by Mark LaRoe Photography. We're going to talk Northern Rodeo and Burger King and farts. It is uh, July the 15th, National I Love Horses Day. And... Uh, Give something away day. Um, I feel like we should give away a Gil Brandt autographed Hall of Fame card and also a Cafe Guy, a Zydeco gift card. We will at the end of the show. We'll give away a Gil Brandt card autographed and a Cafe Zydeco gift card. Uh, it is also Pet Fire Safety Day. Teach your pets not to play with uh, matches or lighters. It is Tapioca Pudding Day. Not a big tapioca pudding guy. I think it's the texture. On this date in 1876, baseball's first official no-hitter, George Bradley of the St. Louis Brown stockings, no-hit the Hartford Dark Blues. Uh, 1901, Christy Mathewson, no-hit St. Louis. 1909, uh, future Baseball Hall of Famer Ty Cobb hit two inside-the-park home runs and uh, in a big win. 1912, Amer- uh, one of the greatest athletes ever. Jim Thorpe, was play- uh, he placed in the top four in all ten events. For an Olympic record, 8,413 points to win the decathlon gold medal in Stockholm. The medal was stripped the next year because Thorpe had played professional baseball. But the gold medal was then reinstated back in 1982. It, I'm hard-pressed not to put Jim Thorpe as my number two all-time great athlete. Secretary, it's my all-time greatest athlete. But Jim Thorpe in number two spot, hard to argue. 1923 at the U.S. Open... Uh, Bobby Jones won his first major championship. He uh, was an amateur legend, of course. 1927, Jones, th- so this was four years later at, uh, in Britain at St. Andrews, goes back-to-back winning Open championships. 1961, at Royal Birkdale, Arnold Palmer wins the first of two straight Open championships. 1972, at Muirfield, Lee Trevino uh, goes uh, back-to-back with the Claret Jug. First to successfully defend his title since Arnold Palmer in 62. 1973, Nolan Ryan, his second career no-hitter. 1978 at St. Andrews, Jack Nicholas completes his third career Grand Slam. 1980, Johnny Bench hit his 314th home run as a catcher to break Yogi Berra's record. That record is now held by Mike Piazza. 1996, after 2,216 consecutive games at shortstop, Cal Ripken moves to third base. And uh, one birthday I wanted to bring up today, uh, Jan Michael Vincent was born on this day in 1944. He passed away last year, but Airwolf, great show. Uh, But he was born in Denver, Colorado on this date in 1944. All right, uh, let's do this. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. All right. I've got an autographed Gil Brandt. The walk-off, by the way, brought to you by Cafe Zydeco. Make sure you stop by 625 Euclid in Helena, also in Bozeman and Billings. Um, I had, for the first time in my life, beignets a couple of weeks ago. Holy cow, those are so good. Why have I not been introduced to beignets before? Seriously. Unbelievable. Um, and I got a Cafe Zydeco gift card and also a Gil Brandt autographed Hall of Fame card. If, let's see, what should we, what should we do? Um, how many home runs has Mike Piazza hit? Or did he hit in his career? He owns the catching record for Hall of Fame. Uh, for Well, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, for uh, home runs by a catcher. Used to be Yogi, then it was Johnny, now it's Piazza. How many home runs does Piazza have? You can email me, jasonwalkersports at gmail.com, and uh, give me the answer. And uh, we'll send you an autographed Gil Brandt and Hall of Fame card and also a Cafe Zydeco gift card. So there you go. Thanks to David Samadhi, Dr. David Samadhi joining us. Hello, Cassie Cosina, the former Cassie Ashley. Tune in from, I think, uh, Nebraska. Hello. Uh, thanks for watching. Dr. David Samadhi, though, appreciate his time. 
um, joining us and uh, enlightening us about COVID. Tomorrow on the show, we're going to talk to MSU women's basketball coach Trisha Binford about her new uh, deal. We'll talk about the Cats and a whole lot more. Go to JasonWalkerShow.com. If you missed anything, we'll see you back here tomorrow at 4. And have yourself a wonderful Wednesday. And we'll see you on a terrific Thursday tomorrow. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy. Enjoy.